What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for joining us today on another awesome Partner First webinar. This time I'm being joined by our wonderful friends over at Snome VTech. Um, we're very proud. They were awesome participants, sponsors of our Cloud Connection Summit, and uh, we're super excited to have them on uh, with us today, just to showcase some of their products, talk about the interoperability, and uh, answer any questions you guys might have. Without further ado, I'll be uh, happy to join on, add on my good friend, Corey Cather, and my good friend, Simon Bradbook. How are you doing, gentlemen? Very good, thanks, Ray. Great, Ray, thanks for having us on today. Awesome, Corey, uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to everybody uh, a little about your role with Snome and, uh, and what you do there? Well, I work with the uh, cloud service providers, regional account manager. Uh, so I work with a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, some of the platforms as well as uh, the service providers that are, uh, you know, selling to end users, but as well as selling to, you know, white label providers and things like that. So really, we're trying to connect, get our product out there and uh, let everybody know about the, uh, the great offerings we have here. Awesome. And what about yourself, Simon? Talk about uh, your role there, how, you, how long you've been with Gnome. Yeah, sure. I've, uh, well, I'm the sales engineer, Ray. Right? Uh, for all the business products with so um, I like to say that I like to keep my sales force honest so they're not overselling stuff um, which is basically and I, I walk that fine line between R&D and sales which is like why I'm covered in bruises most of the time it's not because Corey's punching me or anything like that uh, but I've been with um, the company now for just over nine years started off in hospitality uh, with a range of uh, SIP phones that we've been uh, introducing into all the hotel rooms and uh, made the transition into the uh, business world. Awesome. Awesome. And then we have one more guest to join, to add on here. Uh, we have our good friend, Bud Nye, also out of, uh, out of PA. Uh, we're not going to hold that against you. And I know you and Sean have uh, already shared way too many stories, making me jealous here. How you doing, Bud? I'm doing well. How's everybody doing? Good man, good. good thanks, thanks for being on. Why don't you tell us about yourself and uh, and your shop and uh, why you're on the call today? Sure. So, uh, started about 40 years ago with my father getting into traditional PBXs, and about four years ago, I got into the MSP world. Um, and about two years ago, we converted and started selling VoIP. Um, and about six months into selling VoIP, uh, I was approached by Snome and became a partner with them. And uh, since then, I've standardized and exclusively uh, sell Snome uh, handsets. Um, we've got anywhere from 800 to 1,000 out there in the past 16 months or so. Um, and so we're kind of here to bring our experience with the handsets and, and uh, you know, hopefully clear some of that up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, here at OIT, we, you know, we just like at CCS at our Cloud Connection Summit, um, we had, we paired vendors and industry professionals with their experiences and then we also held them to the to the truth and said okay well we want to get actual users of this stuff um so we've been working with with corey and simon for a good bit now uh for a lot of this year as we prepared for ccs um but when i had the opportunity to bring on somebody like bud that's been not only using it but purely standardizing on this because of his experiences um i couldn't pass that up to to get those experiences on this so thanks for being on man sure Cool. So, uh, Corey, I know you got a PowerPoint. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to just go over the agenda real quick. Um, we're going to do some presentation stuff. We're going to talk about some of the devices. It's not just going to be a talking head thing, just like always. Please, Epic Beard. Look at Sean already in the chat. So, <laughs> talk about the Epic Beard. <laughs> Uh, um, what should we call it? I was thinking uh, the same thing. It's been a while since I've seen you, bud. That that is that's looking good. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. Uh, so we're gonna go through the presentation uh, as Simon and Corey are talking about the devices. We're gonna ask some questions. Bud's gonna weigh in. Um, but not only that, we do have the devices with us today, which I'm super excited to talk about. So. This is not just going to be a talking. This is going to be a show and tell. We're going to talk about S wraps. We're going to talk about Snap Builder. We're going to talk about provisioning, um, and all the glorious stuff that comes along with it. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat. We will answer. We will do Q and A afterward. And everything we share here, obviously being recorded, we'll share the slide deck. And we have some giveaways. Uh, we have not one but two giveaways. Um, talk about awesome partners. First giveaway being for best. Uh, best comment or question that's going to be picked by Corey. Uh, and Corey, what are we giving away for that one, man? 
We've got a <clears throat> D785, uh, otherwise known as uh, Bud's favorite snow phone, I think. Uh, That's right. <laughs> which is our our executive level, um, you know, desk set, which has the the dual screens. We'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, it's, a, yep. it's a pretty solid phone. That's pretty cool. And then second, uh, we're going to pick uh, someone at random um, from today's webinar. Uh, uh, Corey and Simon will pick that person after the fact. They are also going to get a D785 paired with a free year of a bundled premium seat from us because uh, we don't just want you to have the hardware. We want you to be able to use it uh, as well. So uh, absolutely weigh in, <laughs> Sean, PA men. Sean, I, don't you have work to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that, uh, Corey, are you ready to start talking? I'll go ahead and share your uh, your presentation here, man. Yeah, that sounds great. So, again, thanks for having us. Thanks for uh, joining us today, too. And it's nice to have the opportunity to kind of show everything we have. We have a little bit. We'll show a little bit of how we kind of work in certain verticals right now, um, like restaurant, retail, uh, to name a few. But we're also going to cover the line, just what we have available as well. Um, so, one of the first things we wanted to touch on is is really kind of you know who we are what we are uh so uh snome is it is the uh, so we purchased snome uh back in 2016 so we've standardized on lines where uh at the time we had two different lines we had a vtech line and we had a snome line um, everything moving forward is that sip is snome so snome branded uh sip phones are Moving forward, there'll be no, you know, no VTech branded SIP lines. So we are VTech, Snome. If in case you're confused on the two, everything is is Snow moving forward. Uh, so what we've got is uh, really everything is still kind of there as far as all the engineering. We've got in Berlin for Snome, but we have uh, manufacturing. Uh, we have really an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, full infrastructure now where we've got. Um, some engineers in North America, we've got engineers in Berlin, and then also in Hong Kong. Uh, but we've got full end-to-end -end manufacturing, which helps us a lot. Um, some unique things are like we have a three-year warranty. So anything that is, uh, you know, covered, which is a very unique uh, warranty, I think, in the industry. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed. I think Ray might be talking, but he's muted. I'm, I'm doing it. I was <laughs> promised we were going to have sign language. I, I would thought Bud was going to step up and start throwing down. But, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm just I was, glad um, it was you because normally that would be something I would do. So I was like, <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. If anybody had been following these gentlemen, they had a little snafu earlier in the week. So we're trying to like, we figured between the two, the two webinars combined, you can get the best of both worlds, you know, doing a little Voltron action here. Um, but <laughs> You know, but w with the competitors, like I'm not going to name names, but some only offer 30 days on software and then a year on hardware and then some offer a year on hardware and software. You're doing three years. That's pretty awesome. You know, the hard the hard part I have is it's on the decked stuff, too. It's on the handsets. Yeah. And we're still covering that, you know, for manufacturers defect for three years. Which so. gets banged around. And the other, be the other beauty is it's three years advanced replacement. So yes. you don't even ask for the old product back. Wow. You just make the call. We'll send out the new product. Which I, out of you 800 to 1,000. Oh. Can you Sorry, say that again? again? You said make a call, not like yeah. send a ticket via a portal here back in three years. After Absolutely. Nope. It's, it's that old-fashioned route that we all like where you pick up the phone, you dial a number, you speak to one of our support guys. They check everything out. And if they say, yep, that's a broken product, there's a new one shipped to you straight away. I love that. In my experience over the past 16 months between the, the handsets I've put out, I've had five, maybe five warranty calls. And uh, I, I can say you call into the support line and it's answered within 30, 40 seconds for the most part. Um, so it's they're very attentive and I've not had any issues as far as warranty returns. But just in general, the product is held up um, so that the warranty, I guess, kind of makes sense because the stuff doesn't break anyways. That's that's pretty awesome. I love that. Yeah, but if it should, it should later, Corey. I don't know what we did, but I already see a Facebook like. <laughs> so, <laughs> like it's the beard. It's the beard. It's the beard. It's fake news. <laughs> Simon, you got to get on board, man. Like you know, I, I feel like like Corey's like month one, I'm month two, and then Bud's like month five. Like 
<laughs> oh, see, I have this period. I just yeah. had to trim it. Actually, I get. I can't. I don't know if I could get to Bud's level. I just. I, I try. Or, I, or I if do. you're in IT, Simon is nine a.m. <laughs> like Corey's eleven a.m. I'm two p.m. and Bud is five p.m. So. Yeah. I think I'd be better off with the sharpie actually painting like mustache and that on because it's just not going to work. We'll, we'll get our graphic artist to take care yeah. of you. We'll, we'll fix there it. There you up. go. Perfect. I'm all sorry. right, let me. I'll, no, no, no. We're, I'll wrap this up real quick on this part. But it, bottom line is, we do we do have North American support, and you know what Bud pointed out is we you know we answer it quick. So you've got tech support, you've got sales support, you've got marketing. Our warehouse is in San Antonio, Texas, uh, so we're all here in North America. Even even Simon is in Canada, which is you know that, that is part right? of North America, by the way. <laughs> just, just, just we, we like we like Canada too. We just brought on a new employee in Canada, so you know, nice. That's good. Uh, so, so those are those are kind of the thing, key things that stand out. You can get a hold of us. We're we're around. Um, so what we'll touch on is some of the verticals that we kind of um, are strong in, where where our products can stand out in. Obviously, we can go in any office situation, anything like that. We're just going to kind of give you some guidance as to where where else we can really uh, uh, help you out. So these are some of the kind of the key standout features that we that we run into, or that we can you know we can kind of pride ourselves on. Um, we do have our, we'll go into the details of these, of course, but the M100 Kaylee decked mobility or Kaylee uh, functionality for our decked handsets. Um, it's great for small small businesses, um, you know, up to 10 handsets are supported on that. Um, the, the N900 um, single cell or multi-cell solution is great for large footprints or, um, you know, large enterprise type, um, you know, deployments it gives you some flexibility in how large it can go. So multi-cell, and again, Simon will go into that a little bit more as and well. And that's uh, that's best in class, I mean, far and away as far as density. Um, you know, we're not talking like small warehouse. We're talking like, you know, hospital. We're talking like big, you know, hotel, college campus, big deployments, uh, which is awesome because that's a, that's a huge hole in the space right now. <clears throat> and then... Our desk sets are unique in a, in a couple of ways, which we'll top on, touch on. Obviously, we feel they're a great value just on their own, implementing them in a normal office space. But there are some things that set them apart, and they do have a USB uh, dongle that you can turn them into Wi-Fi or uh, attach a decked speakerphone to. Um, we have a fully uh, decked uh, wireless conference phone that's available now, um, including detachable decked wireless mics. Um, we have some great rebate offers for you as well. So the end users are able to uh, easily go online and get rebates for just about all the products, I think, right now at this point, um, including a special rebate on uh, conference phones. Um, and then, of course, you know, with every win, you have more opportunities to, to add on to it. So we're going to touch on uh, restaurants. Obviously, they've been hit pretty hard. Um, <clears throat> the Prior to COVID, um, there were about uh, 600,000 restaurants in the industry. Um, so according to Yelp, about 32,000 have closed since March 1st, uh, by August 31st. So there are a lot of restaurants that are, that are struggling. Um, retail, the same thing. They're closely behind them. Um, but the diners are coming back. And as you've probably seen, some of our seating is becoming a little more unique <laughs> in that... Uh, here locally, for example, uh, we've got uh, a suburb of Portland where they've closed a street. So a full street is closed and they have tented areas. It's a commons. So all the businesses, all the restaurants that are in that block, they're able to, they're able to, Simon, I think we can hear you in there. Is that <laughs> there? They're able to share. The street in Portland was closed. I was wondering if that was because of the rioting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, not in Beaverton. Beaverton is a is, is is a suburb, but yes, that's that's going on downtown. So, uh, but no, we what they've done is really kind of given the restaurants a a bigger place to sit, right? And a lot of the restaurants are moving um, a lot of their they're creating tented areas. So we have another restaurant that has literally four pop up tents in their parking lot where they've extended um, you know their their seating outside and they're putting up heating you know uh, 
ways to keep people warm and lights and things like that. And then actually we were talking to Bud earlier and he said he's got some examples too of what you guys are doing locally there. Yeah, we uh, one of our local clients that we converted recently, um, they installed what they're calling greenhouses. So it's, it's like an actual greenhouse that's temperature regulated. And so they put them up in their parking lots and they've put lights in them. And the advantage to having that is one, obviously temperature regulation. So it's a lot warmer than a tent, but two, because it's a greenhouse, it's made to get wet. So after each diner or party has used it, it's very easy to clean and sanitize. Um, and so, you know, they're utilizing cordless phones um, the, and a wireless deck solution in that instance. Um, and we also saw that when they transitioned, they never had a takeout service before. And so they needed to be, you know, have people there ready to hand out the takeout and they have a dedicated number that's pointed to a cordless phone. And so they're able to answer that. And, you know, someone pulls up into the, to the parking lot, calls the number and they can bring the food out um, while being on the phone. And so that's been, you know, some of the changes that a lot of our restaurants have had to adapt to where, you know, they never had to deal with something where running out to the parking lot was a thing. Right. Um, so that's why it's become important. Yeah. That, and just that's go like ahead. One of my most excited things like, you know, when we were talking to, you know, I started talking to like snow and Sean started talking to, to, to Corey and Simon, you know, we're talking and it's like, yeah, we have desk deck phones. We have desk phones. We have cordless. Hey, but like, <laughs> we, we sat down and talked and started talking about like this KLE stuff and oh, wow. That that was the whole game changer thing. Um, I, I don't want to jump the shark. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll let the better people speak about it. Um, but yeah, real quick though, um, I guess we were able to find another picture of Simon where he was, um, where he was matching. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I don't butcher this too much. That's that's Simon with the. <laughs> Well played. Straight well. out of the seventies. I can't even take credit for that. That, that, that was that was Glenn from Mighty Manatee. Can I, can I have a couple? Oh, of that that's I, I, I I can be real to me. You you did not think that you were going to get this much value out of today's webinar. Talk about like it just <laughs> I didn't. Both sides. So, uh, but Corey, please go ahead, man. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, <laughs> bottom line is, you know, it's larger footprint. You need, you know, you need to be able to go out and. Um, cover a larger area and still think keep things very simple and that's where that's where KLE comes in really handy um so we'll give you an example of a of a deployment we did uh recently that it finished up this year is um we put KLE in or into a 400 a restaurant chain and they put you i think it was mostly three or four units in each location uh, but they were able to do it uh, very easily uh, remotely where they where they essentially drop ship to each location um, the nice things about these again we'll go into more specifics but there's no um there's no transfer there's no um you know having to park and retrieve it's a kle system that actually allows you to answer a call on any of these phones put it on hold and pick it up on another phone um, the nice things about places like restaurants is then when you do have high turnover or you don't want specific extensions for people, it's a nice, easy system that's like an old fashioned KLE system, but it's SIP. Um, a lot of these restaurants do also have POTS lines. They have old fashioned lines um, where this is also a savings for them as well. Um, so there's two parts. It's easy. There's a savings. You get increased range. So there's a, there's a lot of advantages to it. And of course, you know, we throw in some extra incentives like rebates and things like that. Uh, but in this particular case, they were satisfied enough with it that they actually gave our partner another referral, um, which he's working on currently. And they're also looking at putting in the PA1 into these restaurants. So the PA1, if you're not familiar with it, um, is this guy, which I think um, I know Ray's very familiar with. Oh, yeah. I, I love this thing. This thing is like <laughs> one of my favorite. Like, yeah. This is... You can see how this would be helpful in a restaurant, right? We're outside. So you know, oh, yeah. tacking that onto the system. So the stupid little beepers they give you? <laughs> Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so they can shout people down. Well, and it's like multi-purpose too, because like the PA one, you can actually have, um, because you can pipe in other audio too. Like you can have the chimes, you can take over, you know, you can play something, you know, when it rings or you can just go, you know, multicast paging, that kind of stuff. And one of the things a lot of the other vendors miss, it's POE powered, which when you're running cable to places, look at Bud's like, yeah, dude, that's a big yeah. one. 
when you're running cables to places, you know, you don't want to run power plus plus network. You're already mounting these things up somewhere. Very durable, by the way. I don't think I've ever had a single one fail, and I've been using them for years. So, is it these yeah, I have a I have a few of them deployed uh, car dealerships, things like that, and you know, we have the multicast paging, the announcements. Um, you know, and then I also have a couple. I have a manufacturing facility that we use them in for uh, loud ringing. Um, so in parts of the facility where they can't hear, we have a horn attached to it. And, you know, it plays a chime when their phone rings. Um, and they just they've been durable. It makes it nice, particularly in the manufacturing facility because it's high ceilings. There's no um, there's no power outlets anywhere. Um, so we're not fighting with and that. It, and it comes with those little rails too, right? It comes with the, exactly. the, the little ears, the, the wall mounting. Right. Um, and the aluminum, man. It, I mean, solid. Uh, you know, I don't remember. I think it is a fanless design, if, if I remember correctly. You can tell it's been a while since I've been on a ladder, but it doesn't have any moving parts. So no right. taking in dust, no, nothing to worry about with that. Right. Uh, so real briefly, I'll tell you my, my favorite story I've heard on that. Ray, I mentioned this to you is we had a partner that told us he put this in his son's teenage son's room so that he can page him when it's time for dinner. So if he's listening to music too loud, has his headphones on, it'll just blast him. And if he doesn't come down, then he'll just crank loud annoying music in there that his son doesn't like to get him down. So he uses it for uh, uh, different purposes than, say, your normal business. would. <laughs> but that was one of my favorite stories. I, I love it. We used to do the same thing in the warehouse. We'd put it with a little uh, 10 watt uh, PA horn in the warehouse. We'd hide it on the pallet racks. And, you know, that was the rite of passage for new employees. They'd walk back there and just, hey, what are you doing? And scare the crap. It was fun. It was good. Simon, our Simon missed out on that, but it, it was always fun, man. Oh, I, I do. So Sean looks like Sean was uh, welcoming Simon to, to manhood with. Yeah, I, you know, oh, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you talking business. <laughs> I wanted to say thanks for that, but I was kind of hoping it was going to be welcome to ZZ Top. <laughs> you know, you ask, I guarantee you somebody, uh, one of our partners in Discord or Slack will absolutely do that. Um, and actually, while we're mentioning comments real quick, um, Alan Miller was asking, so the USB connection, does it let you connect the phone headset to a PC as an audio device? Or the, uh, the USB connection is so there's levels, right? Yeah, so the USB connection is primarily for two purposes. I actually have one here too. There's a, there is a, um, there's a Wi-Fi USB dongle which makes the desk set a Wi-Fi desk set, um, or there's a deck dongle which, uh, again, we'll go into this a little bit more, allows you to tie it to a specific uh, speakerphone. So those are the primary forces of the of the USB connection. Um, I mean, we do have the the headsets as well. For example, like the A100 wired headset, which is actually the one I'm using now. That has a USB uh, adapter that you can plug into your computer. But the phones themselves, no. Um, so that's if, these here, these two, um, and they work really well. I, I love the the conference thing, right? Like being able to sit there and pair out, you know, the conference. So you have a conference table and you have your your conference phone over there, but you still have your desk phone. And it's not an extra extension. They don't have to remember where to transfer it to. It's, it's just that easy. I, I love that. And I can say for the, the wireless dongles, I actually have one office that there is no wiring in, in the entire office, but we have Wi-Fi throughout. Um, and their entire system is based off of the Wi-Fi dongles. So, um, wow. I mean, they're, they're stable. They work well. I don't really have many complaints from them. That's impressive. That nice. Impressive. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, show you the uh, the models in the KLE here, and then I'm gonna let Simon Bradbrook kind of give you the uh, the details of how it works here. So there's I mean there's really basically <laughs> so the uh, the base is the M100. Um, the standard handset is the M10 KLE. Uh, we do have a rugged handset, which again, if you're going outside restaurant, not a bad idea. The M10R KLE is the ruggedized version. Um, and then the there's a desk set, and the desk set's unique in, in a different couple different ways. Now, uh, one of the things that is actually battery, there's a battery uh, or charge, rechargeable battery in there. What it'll let you do is disconnect it from power, and then it works decked just like the handsets do. So you can take that, take it up to the front counter. Um, you can use this at home, take it in your backyard or what have you too. But that desk set is, um, is fully decked and fully rechargeable battery mm -hmm. in it as well. 
And Simon, if you wouldn't be so and kind, Corey. tell us how it works. <laughs> I would be so kind. <laughs> we work together Simon way too much as you can see. <laughs> so yeah, I just like good afternoon, everybody, and hopefully you can hear me, Net Sapiens. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I just, um, so one of the things that I wanted to get into actually about the, the uh, cordless solution, the M100, everybody talks about the key line, and we'll get into this, but one of the things I don't think a lot of people are aware of is that this is actually a dual mode system. This will work in um, your regular cordless solution, so each handset is tied to its own account. Um, it will work in that mode, so much like any of your other Panasonic or your Polycom products that are out there will do this but it gives you a couple of additional features that we'll go into in the next couple of slides um, but basically you know the brains of the operation is the m100 box it's going to support the eight sip accounts uh, but one of the neat things about this is as well it'll also support six concurrent calls and that's per handset or per base we've got a built-in multicast paging um, an intercom feature on this um, which is kind of unique as well. Um, and we've also got for like, um, it's almost like it's a very, very basic uh, device management for remote users, but basically you can uh, do a remote uh, reboot uh, from XML push. The handsets themselves, um, they look and feel like regular phones, but they're essentially just deck slaves back to that box. Um, so although the, uh, the plastics around the desk set are slightly different from the handsets, um, Basically, they are the same thing. The same feature functionality is supported on both the desk sets and the handsets. So if we could skip forward there, please, Corey. I'll get into some more details. So as I said, with the, uh, the M100, if you're working in multi-line mode, which is basically a regular cordless solution, um, each handset can support up to six concurrent calls which is kind of unique because I think most cordless base station or most cordless handsets out there at the moment, you can take two concurrent calls and then that's it. If you try to conf uh, conference in a third user, you end up losing one of the calls. But another unique feature that we've got here, if you look up there, you can see the uh, line keys, which you use for KLE, obviously. But when you're working in a multi-line mode, those line keys can actually be configured as line appearances. So much like um, on a uh, desktop, where you've got your additional line appearances, you get that on the cordless handset, which is something that um, you don't get with uh, any other solution that's out there. It's uh, basically easy, easy to use. You, know, you can be, so let, me, let me go into an example here. So if you're on an active call, uh, you hear call weight turning your ear, you can literally look down and you can see from the line appearances another call coming in. You can just select that. You can conference those calls together. But it just gives you a very easy call management. And as I said, that's something that you're not going to see with any of the other uh, solutions out there. Somebody had asked, uh, Corey, if you don't mind, or Simon, if you don't mind, somebody yeah. had asked in the NetSapien Slack um, if you guys had accomplished on the KLE line to be able to show presence over uh, decked. So presence of like um, one handset's available, the other handset's available, that kind of thing. Okay, that's actually that that is actually something that we've been working on with another um, uh, service provider, and um, we're actually getting almost close to releasing that now. So you were talking, I'm, I'm assuming there they were talking about um, deck stats presence, as in like we're we're reporting this information back to a third party device that will give you yeah. status. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually being worked on right now. Uh, next release, that's going to be coming out. Yeah. And for those that want to see the the rugged versus uh, the non-rugged, this is the rugged one. Oh, there we go. This is the rugged one. Uh, this is the non-rugged. Um, the rugged's very more of a soft plastic, um, and the non-rugged's very more like um, elegant, shall I say, mad elegant? <laughs> you know, very nice, very nice cordless devices though. <laughs> With bell clips, please, other vendors, learn this. Send the bell clips with the devices, please. Not that you need other vendors if you're doing Snome, so. <laughs> true. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's five bucks on the way, right? Don't worry. <laughs> so if we get into the key line benefits. Now, 
what we've designed here is basically an old-fashioned keyline system but built into a cordless solution which is kind of unheard of the way it works is you've got one hosted account that comes down and all the handsets that are registered to the desk set can share the one primary account so instantly what happens is a call comes in on the one line all the handsets are alerted both visually and audibly so you can like any user can look at the handset see that line one is blinking they can answer that and the beauty of this is because everyone's sharing that if you wanted somebody to join the call that you were on they could literally just press line one and they'd automatically barge into that call which you know it's basically instant conferencing one of the other things that's provisionable on this is like for example, say you're in a doctor's office. The doctor doesn't obviously want people barging in on his calls. Well, he can actually shut that line down so it becomes private to stop anyone from coming into that call. And th this is something that we get asked for regularly. I mean, some of the challenges, um, you know, our host of voice, uh, our host of voice people know um, some of the challenges when doing hospitality, when doing retail, you know, they don't, you know, the hosted model where it's five seats, 10 seats, that kind of thing, it doesn't work for them. Not because the functionality, not because anything else, or even pricing. It's just they need to be able to see line one, line two, line three. They have 50 people that are on a constant rotating basis. They've been trained a certain way. And, you know, they just, they don't want to retrain them. They don't, they just want to say, Look, we're used to doing it this way. We know it works. We can't sit there and, you know, we, we can't sit there and, you know retrain on everything so this fits that need so well that know? was actually one of the re reasons why we ended up building this product because so many people had said to us you know i like this new sit from but it just doesn't work like my old key system so it was kind of like well okay let's you know then we've introduced it into that debt and it's the perfect solution as well for you know any anywhere where you're not uh you the employees are not tied to a voicemail you need to have them as communicating so with that one line just coming in an instant saving for the uh, restaurant for example i mean like i think corey mentioned it earlier on a lot of them are probably talking about um uh taking in uh pots lines right now well if you're taking about four or five pot lines you pot, pots not pot lines um <laughs> that's a different kind of marijuana has been legal we have those in oregon here the tech yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm still waiting for the invite but yeah, if you've got pass lines coming in, four or five of those is going to run you about 140 bucks a month. But when you think there's the one hosted line that's coming in here that will actually support the six concurrent calls, probably about 35 bucks a month. They're saving 100 bucks a month there. So you know, as they come back online as well after this, uh, apparently there's been a pandemic. Um, you know, things are going to be pretty tight for everybody. So we can save money. That's a good thing. Absolutely, and I want to take the opportunity here. Um, Alan's asking a question. And yeah, first of all, Alan calling everybody else out. We know you're there. I can see the viewer list. I know how many people are online watching. Um, I know Alan is not the only one with the poignant questions here. Um, but Alan does ask, uh, yes, the PA1 absolutely has network pass-through. Um, I don't believe it has PoE pass-through. Um, is that been considered or is that in the works? There's actually a next generation product coming out in the middle of next year. Um, and that's actually being considered in that. In fact, it's going to be implemented in that. It's not just that. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Talk about answering the question before we ask. That's pretty cool. That's what, so we're, stay, that's what we're all about. In stay tuned. <laughs> so, uh, Simon, you're doing such a great job. Um, I think you should, you know, handle the multi-cell solution too. Is that a picture uh, of Simon when he was younger? Is that yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's for that was where I was going from my Bob the Builder face. I'm, I'm waiting to see the beard <laughs> on that one. <laughs> well, maybe I was working at IKEA that day. I'm not sure. <laughs> so yeah, as we said, like one of the big things about Snow or VTech, as we once were, since we bought Snow, though, is VTech was is still number one in the uh, cordless debt business. So we've basically taken everything that we learned there. And we've been implementing it into the business solution. We've got the M900 multi-cell based solution. This is a, um, this is like ideal for that uh, enterprise customer that wants all of their uh, uh, employees to be uh, mobile constantly. 
And this gives you that option to build up a system. It's scalable from one base station that's going to support 30 handsets. Goes all the way up to a thousand base station, total of four thousand handsets. We've got support that would be added for well, actually support for Opus. It's an additional module that you'd need to fix on the back because we were told that everybody wanted Opus, but then suddenly there's not many people using it. So it's an option if you want to add it, you can. Uh, this deck land synchronization. What this is basically is a way that uh, as you build out the network of the, the multi cell network, you've got to like, have the communication going backwards, being shared around all the base stations. So when it's uh, a LAN synchronization, that's basically daisy chaining the units together. One of the drawbacks for that is that you can only have a maximum of three hops for LAN synchronization. So deck synchronization is actually a, a little bit more reliable as you start to expand the size of the uh, operation. The handsets that come with this, uh, we've got the basic level of the M25 and the M65. These are basic phones. The only difference with the M65 is it's got a backlit display. Uh, but the M70, the M80, and the M85 are all ruggedized handsets. They're all Bluetooth enabled, and they've all got a man down alarm button. So if you're in that warehouse um, scenario, somebody gets into trouble, there's a quick, easy alarm signal that's sent out. Uh, the M90 handset, um, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in the next couple of slides, but again, this is ruggedized. It's Bluetooth enabled. It's got the man down alarm, but it's also built with, drum roll please, antibacterial plastic. Which is so huge. Is that, yeah, it is absolutely huge. But it's, you're um, using the M25 a lot, right? And and the yeah, the M25 is kind of what we deploy on like a basic, um, just like a basic deployment. Um, you know, obviously not for like our our manufacturers or, or heavy duty uh, warehouses, things like that. But the the 25s are what we see in the restaurants or what we see in um, you know our retail spaces or, or any kind of area that just needs a basic uh, deck cordless, and and they work out pretty well. Yeah, I'm I'm using the uh, 65 at home, <laughs> so you know. And as far as rugged, it, my seven year old hasn't beat it up yet, so that's a win. <laughs> I'll take that. It's always a plus. You so drop it is... down the toilet and fish it out. It's all good. <laughs> I don't know if that's covering warranty though. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, we can do that. So yeah, as I said, the M9, the M90 handsets, uh, ruggedized. But the, the big addition to this is it's made with antibacterial and plastic. And what this is, is when we, we build the plastic molds, we actually inject an ingredient into the plastic. If you looked at it under a uh, microscope, you'd see like thousands of tiny little bubbles. Basically, it just stops anything from gripping onto the plastic. And as we said, ideal for uh, that hospitality environment or hospital environment. We do actually have some... Uh, case studies from some hospitals in Europe where they've installed this solution, use these handsets throughout the facilities. As we can see there, the idea of this being is, you know, like I said, multi-cell environment. Uh, the whole re the idea behind multi-cell is that often with, uh, apart from like the expansion of being able to go into larger environments, one of the key features that a lot of people miss with multi-cell is that with a single cell deck solution, you know, you get more than 10 handsets in a confined area, you're going to start to get deck interference. The beauty of multi-cell is that each handset's got its own channel back to the base. So you never get that interference. A couple of the yeah. other products there. But real yeah. quick also, maybe it's a Miami thing. I don't know if it's a Miami thing, but we get asked for white devices all the time. Like, I don't know if it's a Miami Beach hotel thing or what. But like we get asked for that, and, and it's there's such a like, and I completely understand why you don't want a bunch of white devices. You get fingerprints, you get all the other stuff. But obviously, an antibacterial device probably doesn't have those same concerns. But yay for a white device! I mean, talk about something else different with Snome that you don't see anywhere else. Well, actually, I'm probably going to show my age here, but we called it the uh, Crockett and Tubs. Um, <laughs> specifically uh, for the Miami area. I mean, I'm from Miami, so you're, you're never going to lose with the Miami Vice reference here. Perfect. So, getting the into multi-cell. That, 
Say that again, sir. So it depends on who you're saying is Crockett. That, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's the one with the beard, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just want to get into as well, discuss the installation of multi cell because this is absolutely key. Um, it's what, as you build out the multi cell network, what you're basically doing is you're building a mesh network to make sure that the voice inside that network is secure. And there's, there's an easy transition as you're roaming around the building from base to base. So the way you do this is always going to be your site survey and how good just um, the survey is and how good the installation is going to be because you're making those building blocks to make success. With these handsets, we actually give you the software tools uh, to actually measure the frequency so you can find the optimum place to place the next base station as you are going around the facility. Is this that kind of like, thing, Simon, or is that a, uh, it just comes with the devices? It just comes with the devices, right? And uh, oh, you think like, deal. this is much like a spectrum analyzer, which is like a $30,000 piece of equipment. Yeah. And it's built into the handset. So it just, it's just another way that we're going to help you, like, to make sure that that, you know, because the wireless installations are only as good as how good the install is. So we're just giving you all the tools to make it as successful as possible straight from the kickoff. And as we discussed earlier on, um, this, this plays into our healthcare vertical, uh, doctor's offices, hospitals, um, along with obviously our beautiful uh, desk sets that are there with a the Wi-Fi dongle. Isn't that correct, Corey? You've, you're on mute, Corey. Yes, I am. Yes, you're I am. Just you're just <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, it was a great conversation I just had with myself. So, was... <laughs> so speaking of the death sets, uh, <clears throat> so the D series is our <laughs> is our full line of death sets here. Um, we have an entry level D120, which is about as simple as it can. you're trying to hit a you know price point it actually works pretty well we've got a lot of these going into say schools um you know warehouse uh it does have an optional wall mount as well um but it's it's a two sip accounts um pretty simple uh telephone as far as that goes um and then we get into our d700 series and these have a lot of shared features so these are all color they have programmable uh, key lines. They have they support up to three of the D7 sidecars and the D7C sidecar when that is is fully released. Um, they have a dedicated headset key. They have they all have solid state hook switches, uh, XML browser, uh, gig E pass through, and then of course they all have that USB port to support the Wi-Fi and the deck uh, dongles as well. Uh, just going through them real quick again. We don't necessarily want to go line by line but the well, uh yeah go ahead i was going to say one thing about those as well the solid state hook switch is there's, uh, there's no breaking parts on this it's there's always you know when you've got a standard hook switch that bit of plastic can break quite often with this with just three little rubber sensors basically as you place that hook switch down yeah so it's it's really cool yeah. um you know you can't see much here but yeah there's no there's nothing here it's just Right, it's, it's magic. So a little little side story, just to bring back from from my dad's past. He always tells me this story when when someone looks and sees there's no hook switch on the new, the new D seven eighty fives. When he was installing phone systems like thirty years ago, some of the key line phones, uh, they used to be the guinea pigs, and a lot of times they were the alpha testers. They would just dump out the phones and and not really look at anything. And they used to have these handsets that when they came out if you leaned too far back in the chair it was a magnetic switch in in the handset itself and if you leaned too far back it would hang up the phone call on you so he would tell me stories that they would get boxes like thousands of handsets and have to go around and replace every single handset on every phone because the toggle switches just didn't work and so you had all these breaking parts all the time um and that's kind of a testament towards Snome where they're thinking kind of forward that, you know, there's less less stuff to break. There's less mechanical pieces. There's less things to go wrong. And so that's partly why we don't have as many issues with them. 
That's great. And you know, it's funny because we we do take that for granted sometimes on our side too. We're like, ah, it's solid state hook, hook switch. But in the field, that can make a big difference. So it's absolutely. Um, but I think, you know, and, and maybe we can have Bud address this too, but I was going to say the, the difference, the 785 is sort of our uh, flagship piece here. It does have Bluetooth connectivity, does have 24 F line uh, F keys. What we've done on that one is we separated out the the F keys to the bottom right. So you've got your full screen, the large screen. You can see what's going on as far as your call actions go, you know, your call activity goes. So on the on the bottom corner is where you can then program your your BLF and other keys that you want to there as well. Um, I don't know, but if you're up for it, you, you can share your experience, what you really like. Yeah, so the D785 is what we have 100% standardized on. I don't put in any of the handsets that are below that, simply because the price point, one, I think just it meets everything that we need. Um, so I can't really compete with it. And to be able to put a, a high-level phone just about everywhere, I mean, it, it's nice. It, it makes the system look nice. Um you know, the, the LCD and the ability to program the multiple buttons down there um, is a beautiful thing. A lot of people really enjoy that because it gives them some more space where a lot of the typical handsets, they don't have large amount of button space on them and they don't want to do a sidecar. Um, and, you know, we've done some unique things, particularly being that it has built in Bluetooth connectivity. So I actually have a warehouse where the kid did not want a headset and uh, he had AirPods and was actually tying his AirPods into the the handset. And so he's able to, to do everything he needs out on the floor while he's stalking and call comes in and just taps his AirPod and it works just like he's connected in with a regular headset. Um, some of the other unique things we've done kind of like a backwards compatibility with where I've joined my cell phone via Bluetooth and I can answer my cell phone calls on my desk set if I want to. Um, so there's there's a lot of cool features with them. Like I said, those are the ones that I have the Wi-Fi dongles on. Um, you know, the color display is one of the best color displays that I've had of any phone out there. Um, and overall, the functionality is just it, it meets and exceeds everything that any any person I've ever run across needed. Um, so I definitely fully recommend it. The customiz uh, customization is really um in depth um so you can get it to do just about anything that you need it to do um and like i said i, I have probably 800 to a thousand of them out there within 16 months um so i i think that that's that's our flagship that's what we go with that is the face of of our offering and there's a reason i've made it that way yeah and that's that's one of the things i you know that i love about this um it's really well the color screen's really nice color screen just don't take the overhead shot for it uh we're still working on that stuff um but you know the fact that you have that second lcd here where it's showing you know your blf keys and stuff like that um and i want to remind people this is fully interop tested with v41 um so all this the snap builder that we know and love and of course if i show the right screen here uh, it's not what I wanted to do. Apologize, having a little challenge here. Um, the snap builder we all know and love, you know, actually you have your button builder right here on the screen. And it's just a matter of, you know, make your change to whatever you want, change your line appearance, do your cascading, and you can go ahead and save and resync. And the phone will absolutely, you know, it just did it right now. The phone just rebooted and it's going to download the new config and you're good to go. Um, with S wraps that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but with S wraps, um, you can just point the phone over and you're good to go. Um, which I love, you know what I mean? It's like talk about zero touch deployment. It, it doesn't get any easier than that. Um, it's, it's pretty badass. Are you using S wraps today, uh, bud? Uh, so it depends on the deployment. Um, I use S wraps when I drop ship. Um, a lot of my customers I'm very hands on with. And so they like to see me out there setting up the devices, things like that. So it's kind of like a relationship thing more so. Um, but I have used S wraps. I have customers that are in other states. Uh, we're actually in the middle of the deployment that we talked about where uh, we picked up the main office and they decided after a couple of days they liked it so much that 
we were going to deploy it across their 13 other locations. And so for the past three weeks, we've just been shipping phones all over the U.S., um, and, you know, and utilizing that to, to get access to the system without having too much uh, hassle connecting everything. And, and something I love about SRAPs, um, you guys did it right, that when you start configuring phones, um, you can set uh, when you're doing the provisioning profiles, um, you can start looking for settings that you want to add. So if I wanted to add background, whatever, you know, those of us that use um, those of us that use NetSapiens knows NDP will fully configure this. You can add your overrides, do whatever you want. But it tells you exactly what overrides to use. That, that's what you see here with the underscores. So it's just a matter of, you know, click on it, see what the options are for whatever it is. And, you know, then go ahead and uh, it would help if I pick something with options as opposed to fill in the blank. But um, you, it's super easy to figure out what you need to add. It, it just makes it easy. Uh, but while I'm on here, um, I want to bring up a short story. If Corey, if you don't mind, uh, you know, I wanted to bring up the customization real quick yeah okay yeah great so um so whatchamacallit so what happened here is we had a client uh to a week or two ago that uh she was visually impaired um she had uh color blindness um and so she struggled specifically with red green colorblind um and finding a phone we actually had to show her different models and different functionality and get demos finding a phone that could be useful to her where she could still retain functionality despite not being able to see red and green, which anybody's used phones for 10 seconds knows that's exactly what the BLF keys are. Um, you know, it was a challenge for her. So we, as we were looking for options, um, you know, as I was looking over this last night, I realized I've never seen a phone that is so customizable with the display. Um, you know, you can set text color, you can set background color, you can set transparency, Forget the background screen. You can set the background screen. You can set the idle screen separately. Um, you can set banners behind them. Um, but to go, be able to adjust at a, at a micro level each of the individual options, um, I thought was truly impressive. Um, and thank you for including the actual sizes of the screen, of the background screens for each of the models. That is a point of frustration for anybody that's ever had to put a background screen on a phone going and Googling it. Um, you know, that's uh, so, you know, thank you for that. Uh, whoever had, you know, if you know who had takes credit for that. You will. I'll take credit for it. Okay. Yeah, way to go, Snyman. Good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it's awesome. I mean, you see, I don't have overrides here specifically because I put them in NDP, but, um, you know, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do it from here. You can do it. it it's great. This was a great troubleshooting tool for me. So thanks, guys. Hey Ray, I know. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what we want to cover because it looks like we we got. Oh enough. wow, we yeah. uh, we're going long. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Go we're ahead. we're having too much fun. So I was gonna say, um, I think what I'll try to do is maybe just uh, blow through a few of these slides real quick, and then um, absolutely okay. So. <clears throat> Some of the things we've got, again, there's not too much to talk about here. I'm just going to go sidecar. This one's currently available, supports up to three. Um, we got a coming soon for you. So we do have a color sidecar that will be uh, released uh, next year, um, hopefully earlier next year, but it is coming soon. It is on its way. Um, those will support, again, up to three. Now, the difference in that it has a couple of, uh, uh, you'd have to add a power supply when you're adding more than one, but that that is on its way. Um, Again, now if I'm speed talking, I apologize. I just want to touch on a few of the things here, but this is recorded. They can rewatch anything you say. All right, good, good. Uh, so this is the dongle we were talking about. So this is any of these three you can connect to Wi-Fi, or use the deck dongle to use with the expansion speakerphone, which we'll we'll touch on real quick here. Um, conferencing solutions, ours are a little unique in that we have decked mics. Now this one is a wired speakerphone but the deck mics are wireless so ours is unique in that it's the only one that you charge the the decked mics in the actual um uh, folk conference phone itself so it sits in the base or you can pull them out and put them on the table um, with this guy you can actually have up to three of those expansion speakerphones which is the same one you would use with those desk sets um 
so you can tie in, you can pull out the mics, and you can also uh, plug in up to three of those expansion speaker phones. Don't, now, here's don't carry those mics around. Though. Don't don't carry them around. You will pick up every every sound that your hand and pocket I mean, makes. Anybody that's ever done any audio at all, don't touch the mic. Like, <laughs> don't ever touch the mic. So, and yeah, I, it's not a mobile. It's not it's not the same as your your cell speakerphone. So this is the the new wireless uh, SIP conference phone. So this is the guy that has the base, and will actually let you take. You can take this conference phone uh, in you know in your backyard. So if you want to sit on the back patio in front of a fire, you can you can do that. This actually is is truly wireless. It's rechargeable. It gives you you know twenty four hours of narrow band talk time and twelve hours of wide, wide band. Uh, it is PoE. The the um, base station is PoE. So this awesome. guy does give you lots of flexibility. And again, we kind of touched on, as people get back to the office, everybody needs to be separated. Well, the separate mics and the separate expansion speakers help you do that. Um, this one, because it's decked, will only take up to two expansion speakers versus three on the wired one, but it still gives you that flexibility as well. Uh, we're adding, we're adding. If you're replacing a 2W conference phone, an old one, uh, there is an end user trade-in rebate for a hundred dollars right now um so that just launched in the last two weeks um there there's also rebates that we have for all of the products that you'll see here now this launched launched over the summer again this is an extra incentive to help the customer over the hump if they're trying to make a decision there's rebate for all of the products in here including the conference phone if they happen not to have a, a, a 2w um so every product in here if it's anywhere from five to two hundred units uh, will be able to get a rebate on there uh, and to touch on one last thing we do have device as a service available through our distributors as well and that's through csc leasing uh, so how did i do i did blow through that really fast that was uh that was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> you got through the slides really fast um yeah i mean for any of this information we're covering we're going to share you know simon and Corey's information Obviously, you know, OIT partners reach out to us. You know, we, we have a fantastic relationship, if you haven't noticed, um, you know, with Sean and Corey, with Simon and Corey and, and the Snome team. Um, you know, they've been fantastic partners, but the device as a service, the, you know, helping you scope out stuff. Um, we notably did not cover the hospitality stuff. That's a separate thing. But if you have any questions on that, reach out. We will absolutely uh, get you going in the right place. The important stuff, if you're not a Snome partner, Go become a Snome partner. Come on, guys. Um, talk about the easy one and get access to S wraps and all their cool stuff. And they have a coming soon partner portal. You know, we all love the partner portal. Um, but, uh, you know, and there it is across the bottom how to become a partner. Um, you know, we'll take partnership to a new level. Um, if you don't mind, uh, if you don't have a hard out, Corey and Simon, there's a few questions I'd like to get answered. Yeah. Right? Not at all. I, I do want to point out since you're mentioning. If anybody is going to sign up for um, for the Snome to be an authorized Snome partner, we do have for OIT for signing up. We have um, new partners will get this handy little notebook, uh, a pen, and a stress ball, which I cannot find for the life of me today. I think I've been a little too stressed. <laughs> and and, and, and Bud couldn't find it either, right? He, he was <laughs> that tons of it, it, may <laughs> it may have exploded. It may have. Yes, <laughs> I may have caught one on fire. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so you know we'll we will absolutely include everybody's contact information we you know we want you to reach out to everybody um you know but if you have any questions you know the information's there um you know we'll have them uh but i want to go through the questions if you don't mind uh real quick we have um and alan brought up a good point you know if you're not if it's not something right now maybe consideration for the future being able to invert the blf displays um you know, on the on the sidecars, uh, maybe it's not a bad idea. Um, is this uh, Simon? Is this is the sidecar going to have as much flexibility as far as customization of colors of text and stuff like that? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Talk about uniformity. I love that. Well, basically, the sidecars. Um, it just it's basically a slave to the uh, so whatever the the phone is going to get, we will be able to transfer that to the side. It's basically just going to inherit that. Yeah. Um, Glenn asks, uh, and Glenn is the one that made your uh, your picture with the beard. By the way, well done. <laughs> Are the desk phones well mountable. Well, um, yes. Yeah, they sell the, the the brackets are available, right? That you can uh, yep. purchase. Well, the, the D seven eighty five, it's built into the to the phone itself. So all you do is you slip off the base of it, and it's already set for it like a, a typical wall mount. 
Um, I'm not sure, like I said, I, I've only really used the D785s for the most part, but um, the other handsets, I believe there's either brackets or they're built in. Yeah, the, so the D120 has a separate bracket. The other D700 series, you can you can take the bracket off and just hook it on the wall. Um, there is a specific one, just to bring this up if it comes up. If you're going to ho- cover a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A standard wall plate, <clears throat> then there's a different, there is actually an adapter for that that needs to happen. But otherwise, you can just mount them right on the wall. Can we, can we talk about the, the base real quick for the 785? <laughs> but how long did it take you to figure out how to put the base on? <laughs> it was pretty quick. It's more so I have to, uh, my clients decide which way they want the base to go on. If they want the phone to lay back more, if they want it to sit up more. So but, um, it was, I, it took me a little bit on the first try. I was looking at it. I was like, I don't know what the hell this well, is. Well, I'm but, so used to like the clips, right? Like some of the other models yeah. have the clips that go in the back. And then this is, it's actually pretty intelligent. And there's the mounting holes that they were talking about here. Um, but if you can look, the actual base had these has these little slide things that you slide right on, or if you're going to do the other way, you slide right on. Um, so it's actually it's pretty ingenious. Uh, I'll give them that. Like it's pretty cool. Uh, but what do yeah. we call it? Engineered. It's well engineered. It's well engineered. It's, it's German engineered. German engineered. So you know it has 400 horsepower, and you know it's. Uh, it's actually it's part of the Mensa uh, intelligence testing. <laughs> you know, to pull one of those on the back. I failed then. Um, so. and drawing elephants. Uh, we got some other, uh, Paul, excellent comment. Uh, Paul Filio saying, um, infection concerns, you know, in this new norm, we're not doing the drinking now. We will a tech bar. Um, but in this new norm, yeah, man. I mean, antibacterial is important. We talked about this uh, yesterday about like hospitality and like even like Airbnb and VRBO and those um, don't sue me for mentioning names. Um, but like even like those short term rental, you know, having devices where you can have, you know, you don't have to worry as much about cross infection, things like that um, is important. Um, real quick, I don't know what decked gap is. Um, either of you gentlemen know? No. Okay. I'm not sure the reference on there. Yeah, I know. I did see a uh, I did see a question about the rebate, uh, which yeah. I'd be happy to address as well. Absolutely, we'll pull that up uh, if I can find it. There we go. Alan asks, "Is the rebate a ship to us and we'll recycle it thing, or might be a benefit in states with mandatory electronic recycling laws?" So this is the this is the nice thing. This is probably one of the easiest rebates you've ever seen. Um, we don't want the product back. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it literally both <laughs> right so all we're asking for on the so there's two things on the the 2w they do need a picture uh or sorry a serial number i don't think they even need a picture serial number of what they're replacing um receipt of the new sale um you know who, you know who it's purchased through and everything like that on the rebate for the entire line that we launched earlier this summer literally they just need a receipt from you know from where they're purchased from from the authorized snow reseller and then they just need to know what business class phone they're replacing. Now, by business class phone, it could, you know, it could be an old POTS, uh, you know, eight line system. It could be a, a, a SIP phone. As long as if it's a Snome one, it has to be at least a year old. Okay. Uh, but, but beyond that, it, you, it's online. It's about as simple as it gets. Um, and then I found out about the decked gap. Unfortunately, no, we're not. Basically, the idea being with deck gap is that, um, you could have a VTEC base station, but you'd be able to pair another manufacturer's device to that DEX. Oh, okay. So it's a cross-platform yeah. standard. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Good to know. Um, all right. Oh, and Sarah's mentioning there's a messenger bag. Is that part of the uh, new partner package? And also, uh, I mean, you yeah. guys gave us a bunch of like really nice gifts, but where's my stress ball? <laughs> Well, apparently, I I can't keep them. Apparently, Corey's lost them all. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I want to know where my messenger bag is. You're right. I I think Sarah just got it. Hey, me too, bud. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. I I can take a stab at this real quick. Um, uh, A few days ago, a bunch of systems were getting uh, infiltrated. Basically, as I understand it, they were using the web GUI of the phones uh, with URI dialing to, you know, send a request. Now that requires access to the network, right? Or the phone being available publicly, but 
they were using the URI dialing to be able to send an API request to the phone and then, or an HTTP request to the phone and then dial these premium numbers resulting in toll fraud. All of that stuff can be shut down. And actually we do by default, by the way. Um, but all of that stuff can be shut down via S wraps, via the phone local config, via the, the provisioning server config. Um, you know, that's standard good hygiene, right? Change, you know, and it actually, um, one of the things I was going to ping Simon about yesterday, um, if you don't have a password for the web GUI, if you don't have, if you haven't set a password for the admin, it tells you right on the phone, it, there's a nag screen when you first provision it. Um, and it stays there until you set a password, it will not move from that home screen. So um, I thought that was actually really good execution on that side. Anything to add uh, guys on that one? I mean, you're right though about the, uh, it's a system generated message, the specific uh, points. It's like, you know, if you work in your Wi-Fi and you disconnect the ethernet, that, that annoying message is going to say there that the ethernet's disconnected until you actually hide it from the message. But yeah, you're right. That, that any, if you don't set the passwords or any security like that, it will just keep bugging you until you do. And it's just a system generated message. Yeah. And it's not a, I know there's a default admin password for the local phone, but um, and you can set on and off whether you want it to be in user feature mode or admin feature for mode when you first turn on the phone. So we have it defaulted to user feature mode only, um, but there's no default password for the web GUI. You have to set one, period. Um, and you can control whether you want it HTTPS or HTTP. I don't know if Sarah's talking, she's going to send one to me or Bud, but I'm going to say thanks, Sarah, regardless. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, and speaking of that, so let me I, I, let me introduce Sarah, and I'm going to you know, embarrass her, but yeah. I'm going to call her out because Sarah is our inside sales manager, and she she just rocks it over there. So if you need any assistance, if you can't reach me, you can't reach Simon, whatever the case is, please feel free to reach out to Sarah as well. Sarah will be, she's the one that sends your, you know, welcome to Snome, your authorized uh, email. So you'll... You'll hear from her, but uh, Sarah is a tremendous help. So, yeah, Sarah is awesome. So I think at this point, um, and I can say that because we've been working together for a good bit now. Um, so I think at this point, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to mention what the first of the uh, giveaways here, um, and this is for best comment. Uh, we are going to be giving away color D785 with the German engineered uh, base plate <laughs> as well mountable. Um, I, I love the phone. I actually really love the phone. Uh, so, uh, Corey, that's, you want to that's how you know Ray loves you if he's making fun of you, right? I, I, I think it's <laughs> awesome. I do. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, I, I've got three older brothers just like that. <laughs> <laughs> So to me, I, you know, there, there's only one choice here, and that's jumped in right away and has been asking great questions and have been active, and that's Alan Miller. So Alan, congratulations! This is uh, this Congrats, is uh, Alan. Great we, that's great, dude. We have your info. Uh, we will absolutely get this. Uh, we'll coordinate with uh, with Corey to get this out to you right away. Um, but congratulations! And then the second one. Um, Simon and Corey are going to pick after the fact. Um, I believe you're going to do it based on new partner signups, right? Or something to that effect? Correct. So we'll 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 pull from the new partners that have signed up and then we'll have a we'll we'll draw from there. Yep. So I'll go ahead and put it here now. Um, absolutely, that's the wrong one. Um, but it's it's scrolling across the bottom. That's the link to become a partner. Sign up. Uh, you know, shoot an email over to Corey, say, look, I signed up, he'll check. Uh, and then that will be a D785 and a year free for one seat for the bundled premium service uh, from OIT VoIP. So, Thanks, you know, That's great. we absolutely appreciate you. Um, so, yeah, Corey, Simon, uh, Bud, thank you so much, guys. We, uh, I definitely appreciate you. I know we ran a little bit long, but, uh, you know, we, it was definitely an enjoyable time and hopefully not too many technical hiccups. So, Bud, the beard next time better be out here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just see if he can come down to Miami. We can do some Santa stuff, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, I actually, that 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 nice drawing of me will uh, be a new nickname for our manager. I'm now known as Rabbi Brad Brooks. So. <laughs> well, Ray, thank you so much for having us and letting us uh, kind of show our show our stuff. And and Bud, thanks for joining and and uh, helping. It's it's great to see you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Uh, and thanks Thank to you. you, 
our, you know, thanks to you, our, our audience, thanks to you, our OAT Boy partners. Um, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, thank you for staying along with us, starting a little bit late, running a little bit long, but we do this all for you. Um, and that's really the point. Uh, we do have a bunch of upcoming events, so we want to make sure you're aware of them. Uh, coming on November 18th, that's next week, uh, we will have, uh, let's see what we have. We have a OIT VoIP and CompTIA webinar uh, coming up, and that will be uh, Trends in Managed Services featuring Carolyn April. And then we will have a, let's see here. Helps if I show my screen, right? Um, on November 19th, we have the Tech Bar featuring the famous Amy Luby of Acronis. 12-2, we have at 1 p.m. OIT Partner First Webinar. We're kicking them out hard. Cloud Plus with a brand new release of something really awesome. I don't want to give it away early, but you're going to want to attend. 12-3, um, the Tech Bar featuring Jonathan Crow, our good friend at Ninja RMM. Uh, and we'll see if we can get anybody else on as well from the Ninja team. We know we love them dearly. 12 9 and 1 p.m. Another OIT VoIP and CompTIA webinar, this time industry trends featuring Carolyn April again. Uh, she's gonna have lots of fun with us. She's doing she's so nice, we're doing it twice. Guys, our contact information is below. Thanks again, Corey, Simon, Bud. We love you guys, and thank you to our audience. We will see you soon. <laughs>